Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> There's no room to throw it down here. The Asus XG32VC, 170 hertz variable display monitor for gamers, but also a color accurate monitor for creatives. But is it any good? Before we get into the monitor, let's check out the accessories. Inside the box is a color calibrated report, which is unique to each monitor. We have a USB Type-C, HDMI, display cable, and USB Type-B. Also included is a 120 volt AC adapter. Looking at the I.O., it comes with an HDMI 2.0, DisplayPort 1.2, USB Type-C, 3.5mm jack, USB Type-B, USB 3.0 times 2 and power. Also taking a look at the controls, it has a joystick for navigation, 3 menu buttons, and a power button. Now we'll look at its max height, its tilt, and movement from left to right. The max tilt on the monitor is minus 5 degrees and plus 20 degrees. The swivel is between minus 25 degrees and plus 25 degrees. The max viewing angle is 178 degrees. All right, let's uh, pop on over in the menu and we'll see what options are available to us. So taking a look at menu number one. Menu number one is presets. They change the color, the contrast, and the brightness of the image. Uh, I prefer FPS mode and uh, cinema is good for watching movies. I prefer FPS mode um, just because it's overall around the best looking image in my opinion. Okay, let's move on over to menu number two. And here you'll find crosshair, timer, FPS counter, and display alignment. The timer that you select is on screen. So you can put it on screen and navigate it to anywhere on screen you'd like. And same with the uh, FPS counter. It's uh, an overlay on screen and you can move it anywhere you'd like. Button number three is a navigation button. It just shows you what the buttons do on the monitor. There's going to be one last button. So let's check it out. A click of the joystick opens up the main menu. Under the first tab, Gaming, uh, there's Overclocking, which gives you the option to turn overclocking on and off and to set your frame rate. Variable Overdrive effectively is just a monitor's overshoot setting to reduce motion blur. Free Sync, don't need to really explain this too much. It's uh, AMD's uh, version of G-Sync. ELMB Extreme Low Motion Blur is ASUS's proprietary technology made to reduce eye tracking motion blur. I haven't noticed anything with it on, uh, so I just leave it off. Games Plus is the same options we found over in menu number two, and we'll just skip over it. Same with Game Visuals, that was menu number one. Shadow Boost, uh, there's three options for this. I don't use it because it does crush some blacks in some games, so I find I just turn it off. Or I might use level one, depending if I found the game a little too bright but usually I'll have it off. Over here in images, you'll find brightness and contrast and HDR. HDR is not enabled by default. It's only enabled if the game you're playing is HDR and if you switch Windows 10 over to HDR. 
Vivid Pixel. Vivid Pixel is Asus's attempt to sharpen each pixel. Um, usually you see this on low resolution monitors. Um, I don't use it. I don't enable it um, because the, the more the monitor has to work, the harder it is for the monitor to keep up. Asus is a smart contrast ratio. It's supposed to enhance its uh, dynamic contrast up to 100 million. Um, I've tried it. It looks pretty amazing, but I find it that it will adjust um, the brightness, not always at the correct time. So essentially it's based on, it analyzes if the scene's dark or if the scene's bright and it will change to that. I mean, it's fairly good. It's pretty good. Uh, but for me, I want the most pixel um, response time. I play a lot of FPS. So the less, I mean, it's good if I'm just browsing or at, like watching a movie or whatever. Um, but for me, uh, if I don't need it, then I generally tend not to use it. Blue light level, there's four options for that. Next menu color has color temp, gamma, and saturation. I prefer warm for movies and cool for gaming. Up next is uh, input select, pretty self-explanatory. The monitor comes with an RGB ring on the back that you can control. There's six options you can choose from, and this is where you turn it on and off, and these are the options. In the My Favorite menu, you can customize the three menu buttons. Last up is System Setup. You'll find things like language, sound, USB setup, uh, power indicator. I'll let you guys take a quick look at this, and then we'll jump on over into Blur Buster. Hey guys, uh, editing Sean here. Uh, just in case you want to know how to reset the monitor to factory default, it's under System Setup. It's going to be the last tab, and there'll be an option to check it on or off. All right, guys, let's get back into the video. Here's my results from BlurBuster.com. Looks pretty good. Not really seeing that much uh, ghosting. Looks uh, looks good. Uh, I've done a lot of testing in game, and I don't see any uh, ghosting there either. So we'll jump over and we'll look at my Samsung IPS monitor to this monitor and we'll look at the color and we'll look at the contrast. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the Asus XG32VC compared to my Samsung 32-inch LC32 F39. Um, it's an IPS monitor versus Rogue's VA. And personally, I think the VA monitor looks a lot better than the uh, IPS monitor from Samsung. And Samsung is usually known for having great monitors. So I'm very surprised at these results. Um, yeah, it looks, I think it looks fantastic. Currently you can buy the monitor on amazon.com for $495.99 and on amazon.ca for $649.99. I suggest try to get it on sale like I did. I got it on sale for um, $599 Canadian. So I got 50 bucks off. So it'd be a good steal. I think it, overall it's a good monitor. I think it, it would be great steal if you can get it for a little bit cheaper, but compared money to features ratio, I think, I think it is pretty good. Um, it is a little more pricier than some of the comparable other monitors like the Asus Tough uh, lineup, but overall a great monitor and uh, I recommend it. Hey guys, I hope you found the info on the XG32VC helpful. If you did, consider leaving a like and subscribing. I got many more reviews planned for the future. And as always, I'm 100% the real Brodicus, and I'll see you in the next video.